The Ag Week Market Wrap is sponsored by Gateway Building Systems. Welcome to the Ag Week Market Wrap brought to you by Gateway Building Systems. I'm Don Wick with the Red River Farm Network, and we're joined by Randy Martinson of Martinson Ag Risk Management. Of course, Randy, the uh, Pro Farmer Midwest Crop Tour getting a lot of the uh, attention this week. Uh, they wrap things up at the end of the week with a 13.7 billion bushel corn crop, four and a half billion bushel soybean crop, uh, 168 bushels per acre for corn, 52 bushels per acre for soybeans. What uh, What's the takeaway when you look at those numbers? Wow. <laughs> you know, you look at those and it's just, you know, like you said, I mean, it, it's a huge difference, you know, especially in the corn side for what USDA is saying, almost more than a seven bushel decline from USDA's numbers. Now, we know that when you look at traditionally the pro farmers a little off on their yields, but even if they're you know, we know that USD is going to have to come in and lower corn yields in this, some, you know, some fashion. And even if it's three bushels, that's going to drop our production and our stocks. What is that? You know, close to 300 and, well, three times 90 is 270 million bushels. So we're looking at 270 million bushel minimum cut out of production, out of stocks. Now, all of a sudden, you got a stocks estimate for corn that's close to a billion bushels extremely tight beans you know they're fairly close there even if they you know but yet you know a little bit extra demand from china or from uh the european union which are seeing drought issues you know we're, we're in a tight situation uh, just following social media you can see the tip back in the corn particularly in the, the western corn belt a lot of pictures being shown on social media this week well, oh, tremendous, a lot of them, you know, especially when you look at Nebraska, southern uh, South Dakota. And what really was surprising is how bad it was that with the tip back in Ohio, in Indiana, even in parts of, of uh, Iowa. So, yeah, it you know, traditionally you can't say that parts of the western Corn Belt, uh, you know, the northern plains, you know, southern Minnesota basically being the best spot. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that very often. The other big story certainly was uh, uh, at the end of the week with the Federal Reserve having their symposium at, at Jackson Hole. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell making a, a short speech, 10 minute speech, but uh, he, I think he said pain a couple of times in there. He was uh, being pretty aggressive as it relates to interest rates and uh, what's gonna come here at the end of the month, perhaps. Uh, for ag commodities, what, to, what does that mean? Well, we kind of, we did see, I mean, well, it's gonna, push the dollar more, you know, so it's going to hurt our exports in the big picture. And that was something we saw come into a big light here today was the dollar was down pretty good at the start of the day. And by the end, you know, once he started making a few comments, uh, we started to see the dollar rally, the Dow drop, you know, it might now start to swing some funds coming back towards the commodity sector again, because inflation should rise all prices. And that might help bring some of that fund money, which we've been seeing this week because of the pro farmer tour. Uh, come back into the egg. So not only are we looking at potential for production issues, we're also looking at inflation to help try to build the prices. So, you know, it's just going to depend on how bad the pain gets to be. But yeah, it uh, it definitely wasn't uh, the, the length of his speech that hurt. It was the content of the speech. <laughs> There's also some consternation this week with USDA and their export uh, report uh, out on Thursday. They put together a new system as far as uh, putting together those numbers. And, and in fact, they had to pull the report at uh, at the end of the trading day because it uh, uh, there were some big discrepancies. It, uh, uh, for you as a trader, it had to be a, a day of scratching your head a little bit and what, not what USDA was doing. Oh, it was. I mean, you know, especially, you know, we look at those export sales. I mean, that's a big part of what of our demand, especially when you look at it for wheat and for soybeans and, you know, not seeing that report here Thursday. I mean, one week doesn't make a big difference, but we're at the end of the marketing year for corn and soybeans about ready to start a new marketing year. So, yeah, we're kind of getting us caught in stuck, you know, and not knowing where we're finishing and not knowing where we're going to start. So it, it's a little bit of concerning as far as uh, the trade is concerned that way. We do know that demand has been decent. We've seen some good exports since the last uh, 10 days. So we know that the sales numbers were, were, were should have looked fairly decent, but we didn't get a chance to see them. <laughs> Does that impact trust in, uh, in those numbers, uh, again, because USDA is looking at a new system? 
Well, you know, the kind of the joke was that USDA actually came out and admitted they were wrong on the numbers, but then they quickly blamed uh, somebody else on it, you know, by the, how the reporting system, the people that report the export sales. But, uh, you know, it does kind of hurt the integrity. And, and if there was a way that they could have come out with them showing a different, you know, go back to the old method right away would have helped. But now not seeing anything, it, it puts that much more strain on, on the, the trust. Of course, we're always paying attention to, to weather. Looks like some uh, some moisture here over the weekend, but again, returning to some warmer temps and and uh, some drier conditions next week. Uh, at least in our world, we still need some heat units out there for that corn crop. What's that weather forecast mean for us? You know, right now you're right. I mean, you know, a little bit of rain isn't going to hurt, but it's going to slow down the spring wheat harvest. Um, you know, so far quality has been really good in a lot of areas. So we might see, and I think that's what helps support Minneapolis is the fact that we're looking at these rains that slow down the harvest. Um, but yeah, we do need some heat. We need to get all of September the way things look right now. Um, I'm surprised at how far along some states were when we were looking at those pictures, like you mentioned on social media. There was a lot of dented corn, a lot of the cobs already shrinking. So, I mean, it, it, harvest isn't too far away in some areas, but for us, we're going to need all of September to get this corn crop to maturity. You mentioned uh, our spring wheat harvest. Uh, you hearing anything as far as the uh... The quality and the yields? You know, it, it seems to be a tale of two sides of the state again. The western part of North Dakota is reporting really good yields. Quality, I mean, the protein's a little bit lower because they're looking at just such yields. But the uh, eastern part, everybody's been disappointed with their yield so far that I've talked to, especially, you know, and most of it's been south of uh, 94. Um, a lot of guys saying that the yields weren't what they expected. Uh, quality's good but a uh, little, little less yield and, and probably close to the average or uh, APH levels, which would be tell us that we were a little too cold, a little too wet when we were at planting. Randy, switching gears over to livestock, that uh, uh, the entire complex pretty choppy this week, but that hog market, we, we really, uh, it was ugly at some point, that pork cutout taking some huge drops, cash hogs, uh, also down significantly. What's what's been behind this drop off in the hog trade? I think a lot of it is the slowdown in in imports from China. Um, you know, domestic demand isn't so bad at this point, but we've been relying heavily on the export market going to China because of their their herd being de, you know depopulated. They're slowly starting to build it up, but because of you know their COVID restrictions and and they basically their zero tolerance, their demand has dropped significantly, and their imports have kind of shown that as well. So I think that's what's really kind of catching up to the hog industry right now is the fact that the demand has slowed down. We're also seeing, you know, on the beef side, you know, it wasn't, we were lower this week, but I think that was more off of the negative cattle on feed report and off of a little bit negative uh, cold uh, storage report. But I think, you know, our supplies are going to continue to tighten and that'll help this market later. But for right now, we've got plenty of supply and it's going to maybe see a little bit of pressure here in the short term. Anything else that should be on our radar as we go into the week ahead, Randy? You know, the big thing, you know, watching weather, we did get FSA's first look at the prevent plant acres this week. Uh, you know, of course, what we knew, North Dakota led with about 40% of the acres, um, primarily, you know, going towards corn, but bigger number than expected there as well. But now next week, I think this market's going to uh, continue to uh, absorb the pro farmer numbers, watch weather, and just see where some of the early harvest starts to come into play. Well, thanks as always. Randy Martinson with us, president of Martinson Ag Risk Management, of course, for markets and market analysis throughout the week. Uh, listen to your local Red River Farm Network radio affiliate or visit us at rrfn.com. The Ag Week Market Wrap is sponsored by Gateway Building Systems. I'm Don Wick.